Welcome to this Michigan Region 8 uh, training session for EMS agency administrators in the Michigan Image Trend Elite system. My name is Josh Legler, and uh, during this session, we're going to uh, review the areas of Image Trend Elite that you'll need to take a look at and work on as you set up your agency for uh, patient care reporting in the Michigan Image Trend Elite system. Uh, we have a few items of background information that we'll go through briefly. Then we'll spend the bulk of the time uh, during this session uh, actually logged into an agency in Image Trend Elite and uh, going through some areas there to set up the agency. Uh, we'll wrap up with a few additional things at the end, and uh, this should take about an hour. So I want to start out with a few background questions uh, for you to ask yourself as you prepare for the transition to Image Trend Elite. Uh, number one, what's your current data system? Uh, if you're on the old MyEmsys system, then that was uh, another product that was uh, built by Image Trend, and you'll be moving to the newest Image Trend product. Uh, it'll look different, but uh, it will be a fairly straightforward transition. Um, in that old product, or the, the data system you've been using before, ask yourself what features it has that you've been using that you can't live without. Uh, you've at least been using it for filling out patient care reports, and of course the new system will do that. But there may be other features that you've uh, utilized in the old system as well. And if there are, uh, you want to make sure that you have a way to uh, accomplish those same things in the new system. So if you are using uh, features other than just filling out reports, in your current data system that are important to you and you're wondering about whether those features are available in Image Trend Elite, uh, I'm happy to help with those questions. We can make sure that you have a smooth transition. Uh, also, is your current data system integrated with anything? If you're getting uh, computer-aided dispatch data coming in automatically or medical device data coming in automatically, uh, do you integrate with billing? either by having billers log into the system or by automatically sending data to a billing system or any other kind of integrations. Uh, if you do, I would recommend that you uh, check with me um, for uh, you know, direction on how to make sure that uh, those integrations will work as you move forward to the new system. And lastly, um, I'd recommend that you take an opportunity to Ask yourself if you want to change your overall report, reporting process or workflow as you move to the new system. So um, by the end of the training today uh, and after the uh, user training on filling out patient care reports, you might have some ideas about how your reporting process could change, how you might streamline things or take advantage uh, of new features in the system. So this is a good time to, to ask yourself those questions. In terms of hardware and software requirements for Image Trend Elite, it runs on any device that has an internet connection. PCs, laptops, tablets, smartphones, uh, they'll all work with any web browser, Chrome, Firefox, Internet Explorer, or Edge, Safari. Uh, the old system was somewhat limited. I believe you had to use Internet Explorer on a Windows computer. And with Image Trend Elite, that restriction is no longer the the case. So uh, you could use any device as long as you've got an internet connection and a web browser. Uh, you can even have a spotty internet connection or no internet connection at all until the very end when you want to submit a report and that will work. So think about the plan in your agency. I think a great way to go these days is with tablets. Uh, you can take tablets out in the field, take them on the vehicles. Um, they're inexpensive so if they get damaged uh, you're not out a bunch of money like you are with uh, with rugged laptops and it allows you to uh, begin filling out your patient care reports uh, perhaps while you're driving back to the station or while you're waiting in the ER or something. Um, so those are some opportunities that you'll have uh, to potentially change your process. Also just some reminders about security. I recommend that you encrypt all devices and drives that are used for patient care reporting. Most systems nowadays come with whole device or whole drive encryption features built into them, so you can turn that on. 
Also, keep your software updated. Image Trend Elite is web-based, so you'll never have to install any updates for that. Uh, but you should in regularly install security patches and updates for your operating system on your device. Only assign usernames and passwords to people who need to have access to the system. And today we'll show you how to manage user access. Also, the system will force you to regularly change your password. I also recommend periodically auditing your user accounts. Uh, that's simply going to your user list, looking through the list. If there's anyone still on that list who is no longer with your agency, then you can inactivate them. And I'll show you how to find that list today. Uh, finally, just remember not to send protected information via email or leave it printed out on a desk somewhere uh, where it could be exposed to someone who is not supposed to see that information. And patient care reports and information about patients are protected information. Okay, so we're going to switch gears and uh, actually log into the Michigan Image Trend Elite system. So for agency administration, I'm going to log into the Michigan Image Trend Elite system uh, with a demo account in a demo agency. If you have access to your own agency in Image Trend Elite, then um, I would invite you to log in now. Uh, as I log in, log in with your own account into your own agency, and then you can follow along on the screens that I'll show you in this uh, session. If you don't ha yet have access to Image Trend Elite, you'll want to contact Kevin Putman, who is the state EMS data manager, and I'll show his contact information at the end of the session today. Uh, and then he can give you access to your agency in Image Trend Elite. So I'm going to go to the uh, Image Trend Elite login page, which is myemsis.org with a hyphen between MI and EMSIS. So mi-emsis.org slash elite. Here's the login page. And if it asks for an organization ID, your organization is Michigan. Once you've entered the organization ID, you'll get a prompt for your username and password. And this is the uh, page that I would recommend bookmarking. Uh, you can always come back to this login page, and it will already remember that you're in the Michigan Image Trend Elite system. So let me go ahead and get logged in here. OK, so I'm now logged into Image Trend Elite. I will see some announcements here. Um, those periodically change, so I recommend uh, looking through them from time to time. And I'm logged into a demo Michigan uh, EMS agency. OK, so we're going to go through some areas that you'll need to set up for your agency before you begin doing patient care reporting in Image Trend Elite. The first areas that we're going to visit uh, provide some general information about your agency. This information uh, gets submitted all the way up to the National EMS database uh, and helps to describe your agency and categorize it uh, so that it can be compared with similar agencies at the national level without actually identifying any specific agency. So we'll have some general statistical info that we're going to fill out. Uh, then we're also going to fill out some uh, areas that uh, are necessary to set up in order to be able to fill out patient care reports. So let's start with the basic agency information. I'm clicking on the agency menu up here and then going to agency information. When I get to this agency information page, I'll see several tabs here. We're starting out on the details tab. And most of the information on this page has already been filled out from the Michigan licensing system. Uh, however, you should uh, check through it and make sure everything's correct. And also, um, most likely, these two over here, the patient monitoring capabilities and specialty service capabilities, are probably not recorded yet for your agency. So you'll want to take a look through anything highlighted in red like these are and uh, pick um, responses to those questions. If your agency has more than one of the thing on the list, uh, that's great. You can hold down the control key on your keyboard as you click on each one. So um, 
I'll go ahead and hold down control while I click on these and you'll see that it keeps the uh, previously selected choices highlighted as I select new choices. So that's the details tab. Uh, just check everything to make sure it's accurate and take care of anything highlighted in red. Then you can click Save. Next, I'm going to move to the Service Area tab. This is where I will describe the service area uh, that my agency covers. Uh, you may need to click the New button, or you may see Michigan already in here. If you don't see Michigan in there, go ahead and click New. It's going to bring up a page like this where you'll select the state that you serve, which is Michigan. You'll select your counties, census tracts, and zip codes that you serve. Uh, counties are usually easy. Zip codes are usually not too hard. Uh, but nobody knows what census tracts they serve. So there is a tool that you can use on the NEMSIS website uh, that will help you figure out the census tracts that you serve. I'll quickly show you that tool at nemsis.org. From the NEMSIS homepage, I can go to the Technical Resources menu and go to EMS Agency Service Area Builder. Then I can click the link on that page for the Service Area Builder. The EMS Agency Service Area Builder, if you allow it, will come up with the location where you are. I'm located near Portland, Oregon, so it's zoomed into there for me. Uh, but of course, most of you will be in Michigan, where it will uh, just zoom into the uh, area where you are located. Uh, at this point, you can do a couple things to create your EMS agency service area. Uh, one is that you can draw it. So I'll click the Draw button, and uh, I could just kind of draw a box around the area that is my service area. Uh, once I draw that box, it's going to expand to include any census tracts that were partially in that box that I drew. So even though, though I drew a fairly small box, uh, it covered some very large census tracts, so it then identified all of those census tracts. Uh, over here on the left-hand side, then I can see Michigan has been identified as the state, uh, Schoolcraft County as the county, and these four census tracts. So then I can use these census tract numbers and go find them in Image Trend Elite and add them to my list. So I would find the census tracts on this list highlight the ones that I need, and click this uh, arrow button to move them over to this box. Um, it will also give you your uh, zip codes that you serve. In case you don't know which uh, ones you serve, you can find that list here as well. So that's the EMS Agency Service Area Builder at the NEMSIS website, which will help you to figure out those census tracts that you serve and put them into your EMS Agency Service Area in Image Trendy Leads. Once you've filled out that information, you can click Save, and you can click Back. The next area we're going to look at is Statistical Year Info. This is where you'll put in a little bit of information about how many calls you've gone on in the previous year. Uh, you may see a year already in there, or you may see nothing, in which case you want to click the New button to add in a year of statistical info. I'm going to go ahead and click on this existing entry here for 2017. If you try to create a new entry for statistical year info, Image Trend Elite is going to automatically put in the current year for the year. Uh, but we need to put in some info for a year that has finished. So go ahead and change that to last year. So if you're doing this in 2018, you want to report your stats for 2017. If you're getting around to this in 2019, you could report your stats for 2018. The first two questions you'll see under the year are your service area size and population. You can get some uh, estimates for those uh, pieces of information from that NEMSIS service area builder. It has a section at the bottom called census statistics. And if you look in there, it will give you the area and population that you selected. Now, of course, if your agency just serves part of some of these census tracts, then you'll have to adjust these numbers from there to come up with your estimates of what area and population you serve. 
So those numbers have been entered in for this agency. Uh, the other numbers that you're likely to have are these top ones on the right-hand side. Dispatch volume per year is how many EMS calls you got dispatched on. Patient transport is how many uh, patients you transported. If you are a non-transporting agency, you should actually leave that blank uh, rather than saying zero. Uh, patient contact volume, how many patients you saw last year. And billable calls, uh, how many calls you billed for. Again, if you don't bill, you should leave that blank rather than putting in a zero. So those will be the, the four main numbers that most agencies will have, well, two or four of those. Once you're done uh, putting in that info, you can click Save and Back. And so that takes care of our statistical year info. So these three areas here under Agency Information, Details, Service Area, and Statistical Year Info, allowed us to record some basic stats about the agency. And as I said earlier, these stats go all the way to the National EMS Database. In the national database, your agency is not identified specifically uh, by name. And so these statistical measures uh, allow analysis to be done that compares your agency with similar agencies without actually identifying any agencies by name. Next, we're going to look at users. This is your personnel list, uh, everyone who works for your agency. Uh, but ImageTrend calls it users, and it's where you'll manage people who work for your agency, as well as people who need to log into the system to use it. Uh, so you click on your agency menu and go to users. When I get here, I'll see potentially a list of people who have access to my agency or who work for my agency. So we'll see here there are a few people that that have been set up uh, as users or personnel in this agency. In this demo agency, I don't have the button that you all have in your real agency. You'll find a button right here where my mouse is that says new from licensure. And that's what's going to allow you to add users to your agency. You'll click that button, it'll come up with a search form, and you can type in a last name and a first name, uh, and it will search the Michigan EMS licensing data system for people who are licensed by the state as uh, EMS professionals. And uh, once you find the person you're searching for, you click on them and you add them into your agency. And then they'll show up on this list. If you have people who work for your agency but they are not licensed by the Michigan EMS office, you'll want to direct them to go to the licensing system at myemsys.org and create an account in the licensing system. They don't need to apply for licensure or anything else. They just need to create an account. And once they've created an account, then you'll be able to look them up in Image Trend Elite and add them as a user in your agency. And so that may be applicable to some people who um, need to have access to log into the system, but they don't actually go on call. They may be administrative staff. OK, once you've added someone to your agency, it's going to bring up the details about that person. Uh, or, as I just did, I can click on someone to bring up their details. And uh, some of the information will be already filled out from the licensing system. Most of the information here is, in fact, optional, uh, not required by the state. So let's look at the areas that are important to uh, make sure are complete. Uh, for all of your personnel. You'll just want to make sure they have a first and last name, which should have come over from the licensing system. On the certifications tab, you want to make sure they have a state of licensure as Michigan and an ID and a level. If they do not have a state licensure ID and level in Michigan, then they will not be able to be marked as a crew member on a patient care report. Of course, for everyone who is licensed by the state, this information should come over just fine as you import from the licensing system. You don't have any way to change this information if it is blank. So if it is blank, you'll want to contact Kevin Putman at the state and have him look into it. Also, over here in the agency licensure group, unfortunately, you don't have the ability to change this information either. But when you're filling out a patient care report, 
and you indicate the crew member who was on a call, um, if the agency licensure level has been filled out, then when you select that person as a crew member on a call, you will automatically select the level of that crew member. If this information here is blank, then you'll have to select the crew member and also record the level of that crew member manually in your patient care report. So if this information is blank, what I recommend is that you go ahead and uh, import all of your users, all of your personnel from licensure. And once you've completed that, go ahead and contact Kevin Putman at the state and ask him to just copy over the state license info to your agency licensure group. Or you can tell him, you know, set everyone in my agency to a particular level. For example, if you're an MFR agency, even though you have paramedics working for you potentially, uh, their level within your agency is MFR. So you can ask Kevin to do that. Okay, then the third area that we need to take a look at for personnel or users is account details. If a person does not need to actually log into the system, then you don't need to visit this page. But if they do need to be able to log into the system, for example, to fill out patient care reports, uh, then this is the page to come to to set up their access. They'll have a user ID, they'll have a password, which you cannot see, and they'll have a permission group. You'll see several permission groups here. There should be, uh, I'd recommend at least a couple agency administrators for your agency. They'll be able to do what you can do uh, and the things that we've been doing so far, setting up the agency and managing it. They'll also have access to all patient care reports in the agency. Most of your users, however, will be provider. That allows them to log in and fill out patient care reports and access the reports where they were on the call, uh, but that's it. So they cannot manage the agency or manage other users. There are several other roles that you can utilize. Um, for example, for your medical director, uh, the CQI provider would probably be a good role for a medical director, uh, third party or a third party vendor, service billing agent, so if someone needs to log in to do billing. So there's a few choices there that you can use. You'll also want to double check if someone needs to log in, make sure their agency status is active and that their system status and login status are active and yes. If any of those is not, uh, you'll be able to switch it. Okay, so for someone to log into the system, you can give them their user ID uh, by looking at it here. And you don't know their password, but their password is the same as the password that they use to log into the Michigan EMS licensing system. So if they have logged into the licensing system recently to renew their license, then you can let them know that this is the same password. Uh, otherwise, uh, you can reset their password to something that you choose. Uh, if you do that, then the first time they log in, the system will uh, require them to choose their own password uh, after they log in with the password that you set for temporary use. Um, or they can just go to the login page and use the link that, for forgot password, and that will email them a password reset link that they can use. So key here is you can give them their user ID and then they can kind of take it from there. Uh, to get their password figured out or reset. All right, so that's users. The main things being that you uh, make sure that they do have state licensure info here if they need to be able to be listed on calls. And in account details, that's where you can grab their user ID and where you can manage their permission group and whether or not they have access. Uh, I can click Save for any changes I've made and then Back, and that will take me back to the user list. Uh, now that we're done with users, the next area we're going to go to is a couple of uh, sections of the resources menu. So we're going to go to resources and we're going to start with facilities. The facilities page will bring up a really long list of about 1,700 facilities that have been entered at the system level by the state. Uh, hospitals, nursing homes, long-term care centers, etc. Uh, what you'll want to do is make sure that uh, you take the facilities that your agency uses and bump them up to the top of the list. If you are a non-transporting agency, 
then you'll want to be looking for the other EMS responders that your agency uh, hands patients to. So don't worry about the hospitals that that agency takes your patients to. Just get the actual agencies that you hand off your patients to. So you'll see, for example, this one, UP Health System EMS West, is an EMS responder. So if I'm a non-transporting agency and UP Health System EMS West does my transports, then that's the one I care about. And what you'll want to do is just set the order of that uh, entry to zero, like it has been done here, and then click the Save button. That'll move that agency right up to the top of the list above all the rest of the 1700. If you're a transporting agency, then you're interested in hospitals, nursing homes, and other destinations that you serve. And so you'll see here, for example, Borges Medical Center is one that I have searched for, and I've given it an order of zero to move it up to the top of my list. Uh, so all these other hospitals and facilities, they're still on the list, but they're uh, further down. So when I'm filling out patient care reports, these these ones that have an order of zero, they're going to be right up at the top of the list for my people to uh, select when I'm filling out reports. Optionally, you can inactivate all the rest of these that your agency doesn't use. It's tedious, though. You have to click on each one, one at a time. I'm not clicking on the blue hyperlink. I'm just clicking somewhere else on the row. And of course, I can only do 25 at a time because there's only 25 on a page. Then I can hit the inactivate button at the top. That'll make those entries go away. Then I can go to the next page of 25 and do the same thing. So to get to 1,700, uh, it's a lot. There's uh, dozens of pages that you have to go through. Uh, but if you've got some spare time one of these days, um, that would clean up the list for your crews. Uh, they would no longer see all of those additional entries. They would just see the ones that you actually need for your agency. But at a minimum, set the sort order to zero for those agencies or facilities that you work with. OK, that's facilities. The other area we want to look at in resources is vehicles and call signs. OK, this is the vehicle list. This list will have been automatically imported to Image Trend Elite from the Michigan licensing system. So any vehicle that's licensed by the state EMS office is going to be on the list here. If you have vehicles that are not on this list, uh, you'll need to contact Kevin Putman at the state EMS office and uh, see you know, why the vehicle is not showing up. And he can uh, help out with that. Uh, while these vehicles will be showing up on your list, they will be incomplete in terms of their information. So you want to choose each vehicle. Uh, you'll see I can click on the vehicle ID. Uh, in some cases, even the vehicle ID is blank, and so there's nothing to click on there. So you can double click on the row, and that will open up the details for the vehicle. Most of the information in here is optional, but there's a couple important things. Over on the left-hand side, you want to make sure that every vehicle has a vehicle number and a <coughs> default call sign. So here's the vehicle number. And here's the default call sign for this vehicle. Uh, potentially, this is blank. And if it is, you can use the Create button. And now I can type a call sign in here and hit the checkbox to save uh, that new call sign for my vehicle. So that's uh, really important. You cannot record a vehicle on a patient care report if it does not have a vehicle number and a default call sign. Uh, also, just for convenience, I want to point out these two boxes over here on the right-hand side, primary role of this unit and level of care of this unit. This information is not required, but if you do fill it out, uh, then the nice thing is that when you're filling out patient care reports, as soon as you choose the unit that responded, the primary role and level of care will be filled out automatically 
on the patient care report based on what you've recorded here. So that's vehicles. Again, the critical thing being that you have a vehicle number and a call sign for every one of your vehicles. All right, uh, so at this point we have completed the basic setup for the agency. Uh, there are lots of other areas that you could explore um, to set up additional uh, optional things for your agency that would configure how the system works for you. And at the end of the session today, I'll give you a, a brief list of some of those areas that you may want to visit. Uh, however, the stuff that we looked at today is the stuff that's essential that you need to fill out before you begin doing patient care reporting. Let's talk a little bit about patient care reports. Uh, I'll be doing a separate training on filling out patient care reports. And that's a good training for everyone who will be filling out reports. But for you as an agency administrator, I just want to cover a couple of things about managing patient care reports. The first thing I want to mention is the non-transport data entry form. Michigan has created a data entry form that can be used by all agencies. However, if your agency does not transport, if you're an MFR or BLS non-transport agency, then you can import and use a simpler data entry form. It takes away the data elements that only apply to transporting agencies, like you know, method of transport, position of patient in the ambulance, things like that. And I've given instructions here on how to activate the non-transport data entry form. I'm going to actually show that to you in the system, but here's the quick uh, one, two, three steps to do. You'll go to the Tools menu and choose Form Manager. You'll uncheck the Active filter, and a form will show up that's called Michigan MFR slash BLS non-transport run form. Then you'll be able to activate that non-transport form, make it the default for your agency, and then deactivate the Michigan EMS run form. Uh, again, this is only for agencies that do not transport. Okay, so let's take a look at how we do that. Go to the Tools menu and Form Manager. Sorry, I did that rather quickly. Tools menu, Form Manager is right down there at the bottom. When I get to that page, um, in your agency, you'll just see this one form, the Michigan EMS run form. But if you turn off the filter up here that says active, you can just click the X next to that. It will show you all forms in the system and in your agency. And you will see a form here from the state of Michigan called the Michigan MFR BLS non-transport run form. You can highlight that form, not by clicking on the blue hyperlink, but just clicking somewhere else on that row. Once it's highlighted with a blue background, you can set it as the default form for your agency. And you can activate it, because it will be inactive in your agency. Then you can unselect that one, and you can select the State of Michigan run form. You can inactivate that run form. Now, you may want to make some modifications to the run form. I recommend that you first fill out a few patient care reports using these system level forms. Get a feel for what the forms ask for, how they work, how they respond to different types of calls. And after you've done a few, then you might want to come back to the form manager and make tweaks to the forms. Uh, you're not able to tweak these uh, State of Michigan forms. So what you can do is you can choose a form like this one. Say I want to make adjustments to this form. I've highlighted it, and I can hit the Copy button to make a copy of that form. Once I've made a copy of that form, then it will show up on the list here, and I can um, switch my agency to use that copy, and then I can modify that copy all that I need to. I can set up default values. I can move things around on the form. Um, I do caution you, though, however, uh, against removing things from the form. These forms have been set up to include all of the data elements that Michigan asks for. So I recommend keeping those elements on. Um, but uh, uh, once you've got your own copy of the data entry form, you can make changes to it to uh, make things uh, more streamlined for your particular agency. OK, so that's the form manager. And then the other thing I wanted to point out real quick is where you can actually find the patient care reports that have been created in your agency. Those are in the incidents menu. 
and you can choose View Existing EMS. This will show me a list of all patient care reports that have been filled out recently. Uh, you'll see that there's a unit notified date range up here. And by default, it's been set to the past two weeks. So if I need a different date range, I can change the dates. Um, or sometimes I just need to clear that out entirely. I can click the X there just to clear out that date range. Uh, and then just click um, Go over here to refresh that search. Uh, one thing to keep in mind in particular is that the date range is keying off of unit notified by dispatch date time, which is entered into the patient care report. If someone was filling out a patient care report and they didn't get to the point where they entered their times yet, and then they exit out of that report, that report is never going to show up here with a date range filter because it's not within that date range. Once you clear the date range filter, then you will also see patient care reports that have no date that has been recorded on them. And then you can get back into those reports and fill them out. Uh, as you look at each report, um, there are several buttons that you can uh, take a look at. Um, in particular, uh, this button with the printer on it will give you a print view of the patient care report. So I'll go ahead and uh, open that up. And we'll give this a moment to load. Here's the printable view for this patient care report. Uh, I can browse to the next one on the list by using the buttons up here. That'll go a little faster. Uh, and of course, I can hit print if I need to send this to the printer. Uh, when I'm done viewing it, I can just close the tab that was opened in my browser and I'm back to my main incident list. So uh, in the patient care report training session, I'll go into all the details about filling out patient care reports and editing those reports. Uh, but this is just a quick overview of how you actually get to the patient care reports in an agency. All right, so just a few last things uh, to cover. Uh, one is report writer. The report writer is available through the tools menu, and it allows you to create summary level or, or analytical reports on your data. So it's, it's great to go to the incident list when you want to look at individual patient care reports. But when you want to know, for example, how many chest pain calls have we gone on last year, or something like that, it's kind of a high level question across lots of reports, uh, that's what you'll want to use the report writer for. Here's a quick screenshot of the report writer. In your agency, of course, report writer is not really going to work for you until you actually have some data in the system for your agency, until you have created some patient care reports. Once you've got some patient care reports in there, then you can do things like this. Uh, this is one example where I built a chart that counted the number of patient care reports uh, by day of week so that I could see which days have higher or lower call volume in my agency. Uh, there's lots of different things you can do in the report writer. I recommend first just getting some reports done, some patient care reports done, uh, and after you've got some data in there, then go up to the report writer and just start exploring. Click on some reports, uh, try to build your own report, see how they work. In the first half of 2019, January through June, I'm going to conduct several training sessions on using the report writer. So I'll announce those over the Google group, and you can uh, join in on those sessions. OK, as I mentioned, there were lots of other features that we did not visit today because they weren't necessarily essential to setting up your agency for patient care reporting. However, they may be uh, of value to your agency. So I recommend just exploring the menus in the system. Uh, but a, a few areas in particular that I might point out. There's a configuration menu under your agency menu. It has lots of different configuration um, areas and settings. Uh, in particular, there's one called general settings. It's got some basic settings that affect how the system works uh, for your agency. There's also a feature called repeat patients that you can turn on in your agency. That's handy if you have patients who you, you go on calls for these patients on kind of a regular basis. 
uh, then when you're filling out a patient care report, you can automatically pull in medical history and demographics for a patient based on past data that you already have for that patient. Um, I would also point out in the resources menu, there are lots of different resources that you can set up. Um, in particular, medications and procedures by CERT level has already been set up by the state, which is why we didn't visit it. But if you carry some medications or do some procedures that are a little bit different than uh, statewide, then you can go to that area to make those adjustments. You can also configure things like signatures for collecting uh, signatures on your calls. And in the tools menu, there's a print report manager. Uh, there are data or there are uh, print report forms or templates that have already been created at the state level. We saw uh, the printable report for a PCR today. But uh, if you have ideas about different layouts that you'd like to use in your agency, you can create those layouts through the print report manager. And there's an inbox for messaging within the system. So that's something you could check out as well. The link to the inbox is right next to your name in the top right corner of the menu. And you can send messages back and forth within the system. And those messages could include confidential or patient identifying data because they do not go outside the system. They say secure within the system. So uh, feel free to check out all those other areas and utilize the ones that would be uh, relevant or useful for your agency. Lastly, I want to talk about support. Uh, you are the first level of support within your agency as the administrator. Uh, you can go to Michigan for support using the email address support at myemphasis.org or contact Kevin Putman. And there's his uh, phone number and email address there. ImageTrend also provides support through the ImageTrend University and through their support site. The university is basically their knowledge base, has a bunch of articles on different features of the system. The support site is where you can submit trouble tickets uh, for any issues that you have with the system. Both university and support are available through links in the community menu in ImageTrend Elite. You can also uh, call their toll-free number for support. And finally, if you have questions about the NEMSIS standard, uh, the data elements that are defined in NEMSIS, any of that, nemsis.org is the place to go. The data dictionary there is particularly helpful. Uh, as for my role, I'm helping your agency to complete the transition. So you're welcome to contact me for support and assistance as you work through this transition. And I will uh, continue to be on contract with the region uh, through the end of next June. So plenty of time to, um, to email or call me uh, with any questions uh, or things that come up as you're setting up your agency. OK, so uh, with all the things that we reviewed through today, I did want to point out that there is a checklist that you can use to remind yourself what areas of the system you need to visit as you set up things for your agency. The checklist, as well as this training session, the PowerPoint presentation that I used today, uh, is available uh, on a Google Drive site. So if you follow that link, uh, that Google link, it will bring you to the Michigan Region 8 NEMSIS 3 training materials. The PowerPoint that we've been using today was the training for agency administrators. But I want to point out the checklist for those that are using the state system, the Michigan Image Trend Elite system. If you look at that checklist, it will walk through the steps that we did today. It'll talk about getting access if you don't already have it, where you log into Image Trend Elite, and then the areas of setup that we worked through today. Uh, it would also um, instruct you to notify me when you've completed agency setup. What I'll do is I will just uh, verify in each of those areas that everything has been set up correctly. Uh, once you've got your agency setup completed, you can use the agency user training session to train your personnel on doing patient care reports. Once you've completed your first few patient care reports in the new system, I would also ask that you just notify me. And I'll take a quick look at the data quality uh, in those first few patient care reports, let you know any issues I find. Otherwise, 
I'll give you the green light and your agency has completed the transition to Image Trend Elite and Nemesis version 3. So this checklist will be helpful uh, just to make sure you remember the steps to go through as you get things set up. All right, that concludes the training session for today. If questions come up along the way, feel free to call or email me and I'll be happy to help out. I'm also available to jump on to go to meeting sessions with you one-on-one -on -one, uh, to work through anything uh, together in your agency. Setup. Thanks everyone for attending the session today and uh, good luck with your setup. Keep in touch and I'll be happy to help out as you get things set up.